on TNT. It's all about positivity. And when we thought of giving roses, we had to give roses to an eight-time All-Star, four-time Defensive Player of the Year, six-time All-Defense, went to the Hall of Fame 2015, Mount Matumbo. Dikembe Mutombo. Dikembe, we are so happy that you are here. We have asked the incredible people of Reddit, our MBA, for some of their favorite moments of you. And so before we even ask you a question, let's take a yes. look at one of theirs. Four block attempts in a single possession. Codex Prophet wanted to see this. Mutombo, take us through this play. One. Two. <laughs> Oh, with the finger wag, too. Oh, oh, oh. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, I don't know why you want to coming. <laughs> oh, against the Sixers. That one, you, you were known for the finger wag. Did, did, how did players react when you gave them the finger wag? Oh, uh, they didn't like it. They didn't <laughs> like it. I don't think that there was even one player in the NBA who was uh, happy that I gave him the finger wag, you know? <laughs> It was coming so quick. <laughs> uh, Shaq, you, you had a moment from him early in your career that stuck with you. What was it? Well, back in our era, both sides were, were thick, East and Western Conference. So if you got the sixth, seventh, or eighth spot, you kind of knew that you weren't going to win. So my favorite Dikembe moment is when they beat, who they beat? Sonics. The Sonics. Yeah, they beat the Sonics. Yep. And, you know, this player right here where he got the ball and he laid on the ground because the Sonics that were That moment. And nobody ever yeah. expected him to win, but he had my good friend, Mahmoud abdul Raul from that team who played well. Dikembe was just playing well. And he was always a shot blocker. And for me, he was, he was always a guy that I had to pay attention to. And I played strong anyway, but when I went up against him and Zoe, and Robinson, I had to turn up the strength a little bit because if you come up there with the easy little jump pick and all that, he will block it. So I would try to dunk it on him every time. Did you but, try to elbow him, Shaq? Like I, you, you know what? I never ever elbowed him in, in the finals. I did not. I did not use my elbow. And I, all I did was just drop step and you know, you know. Dikembe, is that true? No. He knows he's making up. He I never elbowed you. Stop he's it. I on, never Shaq. elbowed you not one time in our whole career. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? That was the way we played back in the 90s and the 2000s. The game is different, you know. Um, nobody would have not played the way Shaq and I played back in the day now. I have a question as from, from watching uh, you, you know, go up and block a number of shots. Yes, Where did the finger wag come from, one? What was your highlight of the finger wag? And then is there a moment where you wagged your finger and you wish you wouldn't have? Uh, uh, somebody came back at you after, after you did that. Oh, yes. There have been a few times where I blocked the shot and then I realized that uh, I should have paid my attention to the ball then the guy just come dunk on me. But the uh, finger wag came from, um, I think, my rookie year. I was just trying to establish myself. I knew that uh, playing in the NBA was not going to be easy. I have to send a message that I want to be great. I don't want to be seen as one of the great defenders. And uh, I was sending a message, and I think I did it very well. Come on, <laughs> ask the follow-up. I just, growing up in, in Chicago, um, I remember one of my <laughs> heroes. <laughs> I know. I know what you're going Growing up in Chicago, I remember one of my heroes may have, um, you know. Oh, uh, baseline kinda, on you? Yeah, kind of went baseline. I mean, went baseline on a lot of people. But for, <laughs> for you to see Jordan steal your finger wag move, uh, you know, how, how, how was that going forward? Uh, what was that post game like? I think it's all our respect. First, um, I always tell Michael that you didn't dunk on me. You know, you catch me when I was late because <laughs> I was not helping somebody else and I came to help uh, Tahoe here who got beat from the best line. I was just uh, two seconds away. <laughs> but you know what? I got a lot of finger work from uh, Chicago, but Michael was great. <laughs> Michael was the best. I love this. He said I got a lot of finger work from Chicago. <laughs> um, so, as you, so, I, I talked about my Euro step. I asked Matumbo later in his career that I get him with my Euro step. And immediately he said, you didn't dunk on me. Like mm. big dudes hate 
little dudes trying to come in and dunk on them. I've seen Shaq put a lot of people out of the game because of it. So, like, immediately you said that. But one thing I wanted to bring up, um, and it's something that we know, and I don't know if the, the new generation really understands, that you never let basketball define who you are. And can you talk a little bit about, you know, the work that you've done away from the game of basketball that has been so impactful that I know that that's what you, you know, eat, live, and breathe. So can you talk about your work in the community and your hometown? Yes, um, you know, my passion in life was always giving back to the community since I was young. And I grew up very poor and I dream about that. Uh, one day, if I'm becoming successful, I need to go back to the community where I came from and make a difference. And that's the reason why when I got a chance to play in the NBA, I decided that I want to go back and uh, build the hospital because I got sick and tired to see how many people was dying in a continent of Africa, especially in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where I came from, and where the mortality rate was 42 for men and 43 for women. And I felt that if I can contribute to that, maybe change the mortality rate, and uh, we can have a society where people are happy, where mom can go to the hospital, you have a baby without worrying that they're going to die during the delivery. And uh, that was something that I delivered very well. And I'm glad that uh, the hospital that I uh, buried my, my poor mother in, you have treated more than uh, seven, 700,000 women and children wow. so far. So mm -hmm. right now, I'm in the next mission. I'm building a $3.5 million mm -hmm. school that wow. is going to open in September for 840 kids. So we are very excited with the work we are doing. And uh, that way, this, we are setting example for the young NBA players who are coming beyond us to follow. That we, need, we don't have to make the money to be happy, but we have to make sure that the society and the community that's supporting us, they are also happy. Uh, Dikembe, uh, two-part question here. One, how are your kids playing? And two, are there any prodigies coming out of Congo that we need to know about? Yes, um, thanks for asking me that, Shaq. Uh, my son is playing great. I just coming from the game right now. I was running to get here. Um, he have a good game. He plays last game of high school today. He did very well. And uh, he'd be going to Georgetown University to play under Coach Ewing, so I'm very happy about that. Um, the saddest thing right now we're saying in the world from Congo that uh, is this pandemic. Uh, it's very sad what is happening in Africa because people are not used to wear masks. Or they're not used to those PPE supply. And the supply chain is very short for African people, which are scaring right now for the fact that if the pandemic start hitting Africa, like it's doing right now in South Africa, we don't know where the future of the continent will be. I'm very thankful that uh, the African leader you have taken leadership to shut down the border before the pandemic can almost swept everybody. Mm. What you have done uh, for the continent of Africa and where you're from, the, Republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo has been incredible. It's part of the reason why we wanted to give you your roses, what you've done off the court. We also have another Reddit question. Uh, it's about something you're taking up lately. Uh, tell Dikembe yes. to send me some of his coffee, please. Uh, Matumbo Coffee, are you ready yeah. to take over Starbucks? Is that about to happen? Yes, you, there's one here. You can get it. Easy. <laughs> yeah. Go to the MatumboCoffee.com. And I think... Uh, that sounds I just pretty want good, MatumboCoffee.com. Yes. I just Congratulations want to on that. Women women. <laughs> I like that. What does it taste like? Yeah. What are your plans? Oh, my plan is uh, to grow this company to get bigger. Um which will support also all of the women farmers who are working in Africa. And some of those women, 95% of them, who are working in a coffee farm, they never even tasted the coffee before. Wow. They don't know what coffee tastes. They don't know the value of the coffee. Every day they wake up, they have to climb more than 10,000 feet above the mountain to go get the beans of coffee and bring it down and sell the bag of coffee for $1 a kilo. But nobody never gave them a chance to ask them, mom, what do you need in your community? 
there's any way we can give you water in a hospital or clinic. That's what I want to do. I just don't want to make money, but I want to improve life of those women, those women farmers. Hmm. As you've said, it's a quote that I love. Time is simply how you live your life. Dikembe, thank you for your time and everything you've done. It's been an honor, and, and I hope you enjoyed your roses. Thank you very much. Thank you, legend. Thank you for having me, guys. Right, I can't wait to join you guys again. Shaq, good to see you.